From freestyle jam to post-produced and remixed song in DaVinci Resolve. A Samsung tablet video and AKG recording studio mic, cup of tea, and some time. A concept by JSM at SM Studios. Time. After three months of ideas and concepts as well as self-taught and newly learned video techniques, tutorials, and ideas, I have now realized a reasonable repeatable working practice from start to finish on how to get an original freestyle jam with me singing to a backing track into a workable timeline format within a video audio editor, DaVinci Resolve, in this instance, resulting in a post-produced song or mix of sorts as the final output with the end results allowing for a sort of drag and drop approach to the original audio song parts and the HD video on the timeline, giving you the option of a reordering or remixing at a later date, should the need arise. The final result being the original recording studio quality audio wave files mixed with the original HD video from a Samsung Galaxy Android Tab S tablet, in this case, in near perfect sync. Why did I do this? Good question. I don't really know. It's been bloody hard work to be honest, but it's been done. And I can definitely see me doing this again with any other freestyle jam I may do in the future. It was more of a crash course learning curve in how to use DaVinci Resolve at first, but turned out to be way more involving. Once I realized just how useful and creative a simple bit of video of little old me would later turn out to be, as well as the output of my content involving my songs and audio. Truly inspired by this journey, but bloody fed up now, and so want to move on after recording all this for you music-loving guys and gals out there to ponder on. Going from Windows Movie Maker on Windows 7 to Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve is a massive change I can tell you, and you do need a decent PC. But if you have been thinking about video introduction to your already existing audio content, and on a budget, then I really hope this info helps to inspire you and help you make that decision. I knew for a while I wanted to make HD videos and Movie Maker as amazingly easy as it was to use and as quick as it was for near instant results, I had simply outgrown its limitations, mainly not doing HD and just knew I needed to move on. Moving on. Watched lots and lots and lots of YouTube videos all about video editors by lots of very interesting people on YouTube, mainly ones hosting and making their own videos. Those are the people that interested me the most. Ones making their own videos and content, and telling you how they did it. Perhaps that's why I am now doing all this with my own freestyle jam or song called Why I Watch Ya. I spent about two months in my spare time at the beginning of the year trying out many free and paid editors, and after about six weeks or so I made some decisions as time progressed. I'm not going to list all the editors I tried, probably about five or six, but that was more than enough to make the decision. The Decision Black Magic Da Vinci Resolve. But why? I didn't want to invest too much time into an editor that was still in its infancy. So that alone prevented a few of them for selection simply because they were early in development. I did try them for a while, but it was obvious I was after something a little more developed and advanced. And I most definitely wanted something up to the standard of my ability to produce audio. After all, I have a digital recording studio, and am very good at what I do there now, and I learn very quickly. I also decided to rule out other major brands that didn't match up to the simplicity of the boring but logical way my brain seems to work. I found some other editors to be so cumbersome at times, especially in the way it got me to do things, almost as if I was having to relearn how to do the same thing over and over again. Can't put my finger on it, but it was more effort than it was worth at times, and I didn't really understand or even learn why I was having that difficulty, and was also put off by the software crashing experiences some users were experiencing. Honestly, I tried DaVinci Resolve about a year ago but none of my PCs could run it as I am an old Windows 7 fan. But about 4 months ago I knew I wanted OBS Studio to run for an idea I have further down the road, and needed a Windows 10 system. I then realized I could now try DaVinci Resolve again, and within a day, I produced something that when I watched it back I knew instantly, DaVinci Resolve was the right choice for me. Divine Intervention Strikes Again Been making music for 30 years now, just for fun, but I'm very good at it and I do love it. So to see a video I made at HD 1920 by 1080 for the first time ever, and realizing the potential after only a day's work, more like 5 hours really. I could already see me being the limitation and not the software. 
Now that's the kind of odds I like because it means I need to learn, and learn I do when I want to. Why I Watch Ya, a song by JSM. Probably made the freestyle jam around November 2022 as the exact folder name is 2022-1101 Why I Watch Ya CEP made in Cool Edit Pro dated November 1st, 2022. The original concept was simply a four-bar loop of me beatboxing and being played over and over and over, and then I plug in the AKG 3000 mic and just let my God-given guidance take over so to speak. Quite literally freestyle rapping or singing and let whatever comes out get recorded in one straight take. After finishing this, I simply put it on my website at www.looplibrary.co.uk. Fast forward three months or so, I start making a studio-produced version of the backing track along with some other ideas of inspiration to add to a proper song version of this you could say. And at the same time, while learning Da Vinci Resolve for other ideas and concepts and new working practices at that time, I suddenly get the idea about using one of our five-year-old Samsung Android Galaxy Tab S tablets to capture video of little old me at 1920 by 1080 which is the maximum the tablet can do and see what it looks like and all done against a wall with whitish wallpaper I know needs repainting, and may just get done now if I think it will make my videos look better. Crikey, just how vain does that sound? Then I get it into DaVinci Resolve Free Edition, and start chopping and changing and simply playing with it in the DaVinci Resolve Video Editor's timeline. Wow! Again, I was instantly impressed. To go from Windows Movie Maker on Windows 7 to Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve Free Edition, I was that blown away at the results I could achieve with such little effort. When you see the two me's in the background faded and all red, I knew right away I liked what I saw that became the first step in this little venture regarding my very first video production. Using my own homemade video, at HD quality, and all done from home. Nothing clever, just making the best of the tools I already had, but never actually put to good use, until now. Credit due. And thanks to the cute lady dancing in the video, who I have never actually met, but picked her up on an amazing free-to-use website for all called, Pexels.com, as follows. Sergey Zima, at Pexels.com. A woman dancing with headphones over a green background free stock video footage. Should also say, the original jam with the girl on the bike video, later done again and revamped in DaVinci Resolve, came from vidEasy.com, as follows. No account info available, 2D cartoon woman on bicycle at vidEasy.com. This all immediately inspired me to change the direction of my simple little cheeky freestyle jam about how I like watching the way my lady moves you get the drift. I do like making cheesy poppy crap at times, and this is one of them. So I decided to record myself in Samsung tablet video, as well as recording studio quality audio both at the same time. All in our back attic, with a clean stained white bed sheet hanging down behind me covering the studio and guitars, to help with video editing later. And spent about 60 minutes recording me freestyling on the fly. So, headphones on, to hear the backing which was a couple of four bar loops strung together, and then me holding the mic to allow me to move about a little, as well as sitting down when I got too knackered towards the end. The tablet positioned nicely to capture me with little to no space to move around in whatsoever, but hey, in the land of illusion, what you create is what you make. The irony is I had a bit of a cold at the time. I mean, can't you tell, I got a jacket on, a scarf, and it was that cold spell not so long ago. Knackered. After 60 minutes, I had enough and fatigue had totally set in. Back to Da Vinci Resolve. Why I Watch Ya. A song by JSM. 1. Why I Watch Ya, the original freestyle jam. This version was first made in Windows Movie Maker, and I think it was at this stage I began to realize I had outgrown Movie Maker and needed to move on and find myself a better video editing platform to invest my time, energies, and efforts into. Still, without Windows Movie Maker, the others would never have been. 2. Why I Watch a Main Commercial Mix So the video I took of me originally in the dining room just bobbing my head up and down and left and right, used for the red background VFX of me. Next was the lady dancing to music positioned hard left and right, and mirrored with some more Da Vinci Resolve fairy dust added for good measure. Then came the fire VFX easy to slap on top, no real thinking here. Then finally me singing in the middle taken from the 60 minutes of jamming done earlier. 
These were actually the very first two proper and complete videos I ever made of this song using DR and subsequently inspiring the other later ideas. Simply from Da Vinci Resolve's ability to inspire me creatively and productively. 3. Why I Watch It Bass In Your Face Mix Same as above, except with a punchier dance floor music approach regarding the audio. 4. Why I Watch A Modern Mix With Screen Lyrics Lady On Bike the original freestyle audio with some post-production but no rearranging whatsoever. And a 15 seconds animated lady on a bike through town video strung out to the length of the jam with some VFX and song lyrics text added to commercially pop it up a bit. Adding the text to this was an absolute pleasure because of the variety and power of Da Vinci Resolve. Although I never actually tried anything like this in the other video editors before, I'm pretty sure Da Vinci Resolve is up there with the best of them. I will let my results speak for themselves. So with this version, I used the original freestyle audio with some post-production to create a new song from the jam, but didn't actually use any video of me singing. I simply used the original animation of the lady on the bike, and let the lyrics and text FX as well as the video FX do all the entertaining. Also, I have made derivatives of this as follows. Nothing really exciting but nice to be able to generate variations of the content in a way that later rather pleasantly surprises oneself when you watch it back later. 4. Why I Watch It Everything HD 4B. Why I Watch It Everything But SFX HD 4C. Why I Watch It Everything But Song HD 4D. Why I Watch It Girl and SFX Only HD 4E, Why I Watch It Girl and Song Only HD. I did try making the video at Super HD, but the PC kept on crashing and just couldn't cope. At least I know my new limitations now. 5. Why I Watch It Live YouTube Version Mix One Lady on Bike. In this version, I had already decided to use the girl on the bike video VFX from the previous Mix 4 as a background canvas without the text once it was all finished. So that made this job here already half done. And as I had already synced and cropped the entire 60 minutes video and audio of me jamming vocally so that was ready too, all I had to do was drag and drop the parts one wanted to the start of the timeline to create my new song. More on that later. So then I took the live jammed video and audio parts of me singing the song and splattered them over the screen here and there in the foreground, with the lady riding her bike in the background giving it all a nice cheesy poppy feel to it all. This was the first time I actually used the drag and drop idea and simply constructed a song by dragging and rearranging the linked segmented parts into a different order to the start of the Da Vinci Resolve editor page timeline. Doing it like this is very addictive and a lot of fun making the song I must say. 6. Why I Watch It Live YouTube Version Mix 2 Lady on Bike this is really the same as Mix 1, except for the fact the song or backing is made up of some loops from the original multi-track song broken up and played within Cool Edit Pro, and then finally exported out to be used in DaVinci Resolve as the backing to this mix. Although I can hear clear potential in this approach, and have successfully done this many times in the past in my music with great success, I do not believe this mix has been a total success, as I can clearly tell the backing sounds loop-based and not song-based. There is still big potential here, but I don't think I pulled it off here this time. And so in conclusion. Da Vinci Resolve is by far the best choice I have made. At the very least, I could just edit videos and get a highly satisfactory but simple result. Furthermore, the fact that it has a free edition is another big bonus. You can already do nearly everything I have done here in the free edition, seriously. This journey taught me that DaVinci Resolve helped me to become more creative, inspired, and productive, and that as well as its brilliant intuitive way of working. This alone led me to purchase the studio version without hesitation. Not bad for a Scotsman, eh? I didn't need it, I wanted it. 10 out of 10 to DaVinci Resolve for the best sales pitch ever. They let their product do the talking. And no, I'm not an affiliate, nor am I paid to do this. This is simply my journey and my truth. Not that any of my work couldn't be done on the free version though. I just knew this was the next right step for me. I am always led intuitively and yet again, Divine Grace took hold and helped me on my new path. I love DaVinci Resolve. It needs a bloody good PC though.
I can't even use half the studio version FX, but if I had to all over again, I would still go DaVinci Resolve and buy a better PC to cope, as I truly believe DaVinci Resolve is perfect for someone like me. Just like my 30 years old Cool Edit Pro audio editor that I still use to this present day. When you know, you just know, don't you? Syncing the video to the audio. Bearing in mind this is my first use of DaVinci Resolve, and knowing full well I had checked myself in the deep end, this is what I began to do. Start a new project and drag the original 2 MP4 video files taken from the Samsung Galaxy Tab S tablet of me singing into the mic. I also made sure I didn't delete the shitty audio from the tablet video, as this was to become the reference for the recording studio audio to be added and synced up later. Ouch! It got really messy here. You see you need the whole timeline, from start to finish, both for the video, and also for the audio. But I originally cropped the video start and end points dumping the garbage, along with some bits I didn't want to keep, like me pressing start on the computer to record, or different audio takes I didn't like, or coughing or catching my breath etc. And in hindsight, this threw all the timing out between the audio and the video in relation to each other. And so, it took a little longer to get the video clips perfectly synced up with the studio audio all 60 minutes from start to finish. So what did you learn here JSM? Generate as few video files as possible when you're jamming. Generate as few audio freestyle jams or takes as possible. Put the video into your editor's timeline in full, no cropping, no stopping, and no chopping. Same for the audio. Don't cut or check, just add to timeline in its entire length, trust me. And make sure you add both the above in exact order you created them. Sync them all up. Match the two up syncing your studio audio with the tablet video. This will take time, if you care of course. But if you get bored quickly, you wouldn't be reading this far in. Once they are all matched up and you are happy, stop, save, and put the kettle on. Make sure now you lock all the files on your timeline so the audio and video stay locked together. Now if you mute the tablet audio you should have studio audio with video. Save, then save again as another project file name or timeline so you can keep a copy of the original in case things go wrong. This is the timelines I had to sync up. Woman on Bike V2 entire clip taken from Song for the Modern Mix and all the work I did to this already. Samsung Video V1 MP4 files of me singing in full, no chop, no crop, all of it. Samsung Audio A1 original tablet audio, never delete, needed for future reference if SHTF even after the job is done, mute and keep. VOCL RA A2 my original RA 60 minutes audio wave file singing directly from recording studio. VOCL PPD A3 same as track 2 but with post-production studio EQ, compression optional and not really needed. Whole take a four loops taken from original song to audition against and get initial idea and feel on the concept. Now I decided I wanted to break the whole freestyle jam into more relevant and clearly labeled parts of a song you could say. Something akin to verses, choruses, breaks, intros, deviations, variations, os, oz, etc. Now to the next bit. Would you believe? At one stage of the syncing timeline, I think the audio and video went for 20 minutes or so without any cuts or breaks in the video or audio, and the two stayed right in sync as far as I could tell. Same as on Movie Maker. It's amazing how well synced up the recording studio PC wave files match up to the Samsung Galaxy tablet MP4 video files. Once you start to chop and change, this issue would become irrelevant and you could tweak to your heart's desires. Crop 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 Next we crop all the tracks vertically at the same time, using the studio wave as reference points. I presume most video editors have a specific command to do this. I also found setting up the tempo or BPMs in DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight Studio helped me in the edit page because if you looked carefully, when you zoom into the edit page timeline enough and look at the light grid lines wherever there's nothing in the timeline. They do actually tie up with the tempo. I wish this was way more predominant and obvious, but I'm just bloody glad it's there. I accidentally noticed them lining up with the backing loops I was auditioning to. They were all landing right on the first bass drum. 
Now why couldn't we be allowed to snap to those please Da Vinci resolve? You want to edit so as to have your verses, choruses, breakdowns, hums, oohs, loss, whatever parts wherever you think they need chopping, in chunks so you can move them around the whole timeline later on. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Unless you want a harder life than all this is already going to give you, then stick to cutting your files on your timelines in whole beats or bars or measures or on the one, two, three, four. Obviously, if you cut on the bar or the beat, you will stay in time and tempo when you drag the grouped files around, but you will often have a bit of the previous or next outburst of vocal inspiration overlapping into a previous or next part of something else. Said again, because you are cutting on the beat, sometimes the previous vocal part will bleed into the next vocal jammed idea that it doesn't belong in. Don't worry, don't panic. Just keep making sure you edit on the bar or beat or measure as close to the changing vocal parts as possible, we will deal with the above later. And when I say edit on the beat, in DaVinci Resolve I zoomed right into the sample to make sure I was on the beat. Again, takes time. This was all for the love of, nothing else. Took forever, like everything else here. Crikey writing this took forever, and I still cannot convey all I want to say, anyways. Once you have edited on the beat or bar, as close to each different song part as humanly possible, from start to finish, it's time to group them one by one. I think I ended up with about 300 different vertical timeline segments generated by all these cuts applied into my 60 minutes vocal jam. I then copied all this to another timeline or project file if you wish, just so I could go back or reverse engineer if anything ever went wrong further down the road. Unlink, relink, or regroup. Now on the new file, I ungrouped everything all at once, and then slowly and very painstakingly and boringly regrouped or relinked as in DaVinci Resolve, all the vertically aligned segments along the timeline with each other. So everything you cut vertically along the timeline all have to be regrouped or relinked one set of vertical segments at a time. I set up a hotkey for this to speed things up a little bit. This is done, so later when you drag a part around, all its subsequent audio and video parts move with it, and they stay together and remain all synced up. Once this is all done, I think I saved and copied to a new timeline or project, whatever you prefer. Colors 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 Now I have my 300 or so vertical segments, I needed a quick way of telling what they are. So in the end I went for colors, and this is my exact listing by colors and descriptors I created. Color chart, what was being sung? Chocolate, ah, uh, I watch you yum yum. Purple, I watch you when you move soft, I like the way you move soft, I like the way you dance, mostly anything soft. Pink, I like the way you move that thing soft. Tan, I watch you stab short sing ZTC, I like to watch ya, I wanna watch ya. Olive verse 1 and verse 2. Lime verse 3 and other inspired verses. Yellow, all freestyle singing. Orange, lordy lordy. Navy, don't use don't use. Once this was done, I could already and instantly see the benefits of choosing this method. Finally save and copy to new project or timeline before we start making a song. Let's make a song man. So now I have 300-ish vertical segments grouped and colored ready for me to drag and drop as of and when needed. I made a massive gap at the start of the timeline, then simply picked a segment or piece or part one liked and wanted in the song next, then dragged it to the start of the timeline, and started building a song from there. And in doing this, all the track segments were dragged vertically above or below at the same time, thus retaining the perfect sync we worked so hard to achieve. Important this, must be linked or grouped together properly. Warning, this bit is quick and easy and fun to do, and instant eye and ear candy. So enjoy. Don't forget. As we cut on the beat or bar, or the one, two, three, four, we will always be on time in the dragging of new parts into the new song layout, but we will still have the audio from a previous idea, occasionally leaking into the next idea. Or maybe even the video in the previous segment needs changing sooner or later, depending on what we want. 
so we need to move the cut point on the start or end of the current segment we are working on, where the audio is not starting or stopping where we want it. We basically need to move the cut to where the actual start of that chorus is, or where that verse finishes just before the next melody kicks in blah blah blah. DaVinci Resolve makes this very easy by just holding the mouse between the two segments where one ends and the other starts. When the pointer changes, you just click and hold and drag the mouse left or right, and it does both adjustments for you instantly. Amazing! So you are instantly changing the end of the segment before and the start of the next segment all at the same time and still staying in tempo. Wow, I like. Everything I found and learned was on YouTube video tutorials. L curves and J curves. For the pros, you will be thinking L curves and J curves here. This is where you want the video to come in before the audio does on a particular cut or segment start or end point. Or maybe you want the audio in first, or vice versa, at the start or end of the segment you are currently working on. DaVinci Resolve allows for this and it's truly a blessing and amazing to use in real time. And it's why you would only worry about that part now and not sooner. I can only assume all video editors do this, but I don't know that because I have never ever used one to this extent before. And don't start doing this until you have finished your basic song, because if you do these adjustments and then decide to rearrange the parts, you will need to undo the adjustments. It can be done, it's just a lot more work. In DaVinci Resolve, there is a command or key you hold down, and then you can adjust the start or end point of that segment only, whether it be audio or video, and not all the current segments linked or grouped together. YouTube L or J curves in video editing for more info. Oops. So now you can drag and drop. Ah, stop. For me, the drag and drop in DaVinci Resolve can be destructive to me in the sense that I don't like the way it will split a previous segment if you let the next segment go too soon with the mouse. You have to be very careful here. I know of solutions to date, but didn't know them then, so haven't tried them, and I had to be careful here when I did all this. I wish there was a way perhaps in project settings to say non-destructive drag and drop so regardless where I drop something, the timeline is shifted and shuffled up or down the timeline and adjusted accordingly without slicing into another segment at all. Snap. I will also say that DaVinci Resolve does not snap to grid as well as my Cool Edit Pro does for me, by any means, not even close, and this is something I just put up with to get the job done. Could also be my PC is struggling here, it's always struggling in DaVinci Resolve. Amplitude Curves And don't forget when you start lining these parts up, you will have to apply a small tight amplitude curve at the start and ends to make sure you have no audio clipping or chops or clicks at mix down. Can't say I ever had this problem, even before fading in and fading out each segment, but I am an audio anorak, so maybe that's why. As it's only vocals, there's obviously more spaces of silence, so that could be the reason for such clean-sounding cuts. Either that, or it is because of the nature of DaVinci Resolve's cuts being non-destructive I suppose. Don't know just thinking out loud here. And so, for your listening pleasure, I give to you, the YouTube Mix. A freestyle jam, chopped and chucked around into a whole new version. Flaws I don't use DaVinci Resolve to manipulate my audio too much with FX. It's not good enough. Have to stick to my Cool Edit Pro Multitrack Wave Audio Editor. DaVinci Resolve may go down this road one day. Love the idea of rearranging vocals in DaVinci Resolve with video, but not the song or backing track. And it's totally unfair to expect that from DaVinci Resolve as it is predominantly video editor as opposed to an audio editor, but I had to try to find out what I can and can't do. Not happy with reconstructing another mix down of my song in Mix 2, achieved by adding loops into DaVinci Resolve. It sounds too loopy. So I would have to post-produce each variation of the song outside DaVinci Resolve and inside Cool Edit Pro Multitrack, import it when done, and then rebuild the existing vocals around that new song arrangement. That's workable and very well suited to my working practice anyway. The second YouTube version of why I watch you using loops of the song played around with can clearly be heard by me as just that. Loops strung together as the backing. Don't like it. Not for me. But where there's a will there's a way. I like the idea of generating your audio and video singing in DaVinci Resolve to a basic wave loop. Exporting singing out of DaVinci Resolve as one long solid wave file into your favorite wave editor or studio, and then building a song around that. 
then put the song itself as post-produced WAV file back into DaVinci Resolve. I know, loads more work, but it lets me freestyle a jam, and then post-produce it with ease once prepared. Snapping my audio in the timeline edit page needs care and attention, or you will mess up like I did, many times. Finally. I wish I could tell you everything I want to say about what I just accomplished. And to be honest, the way I think and type does not always convey what I really want to say and tell you. But I have tried here to show you a way to get a basic tablet or even phone video along with a decently recorded audio synced into a video editor and come out with something more akin to a post-production song or audio mix. It has been a bit of a drain on me, I can tell you. Would I do it again? Hell yeah, you just wait and see. The potential is quite amazing. All my why I watch you videos done in-house, no big budget, just a Samsung tablet, home recording studio, DaVinci Resolve, cup of tea, and a lot of two steps forward, one step backward. That's me through and through. I hope I have inspired you to do something in the course of you reading all this that I have actually dreaded typing out, knowing full well. It would be just as painful and tedious and teeth-pulling as getting the songs to where they are now. But, just look at the results, in about three months, I went from movie maker to this. We are all full of potential, and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. So go on, create, transform, do, and be proud. Don't stop, keep trying, keep thinking outside your box, and perhaps you will be the next nutcase out there to put something like this up and out there. It only takes one idea, or spark of thought for you to be inspired by all this, and it's all been worth it. Other Ideas Maybe one day I will be out there talking about this, because I certainly couldn't write it all down. Perhaps you are a podcaster or musician and want to know more. Feel free to let me know. Crikey, if you have any input to this freestyle jam to post-production concept, then let me know. Bye-bye. I'm bloody glad I did all this, and I'm so glad I got this much down and it's out there now. But I'm fed up, had enough of the song, sick of working on the video, need a break away. But wow, I have learned so much. May God guide you, may God bless you, and may God protect you. Love light learn live, but don't forget to live. P.S. I love you all. J.S.M. Does not apply to the above work in progress, but worth knowing if you decide to add the video after the song has already been made. Down the rabbit hole with the first two mixes. The bass in you face mix and main commercial mix. This section only applied to the first two mixes that I had already finished. It was only after finishing these two mixes, I thought hey, wouldn't it be good to use the tablet video of me actually singing the bits as well as the very first video in red of me just bopping my head? In hindsight, this could all have been avoided if I had just created the studio audio singing and video syncing first in DaVinci Resolve before making any songs whatsoever. The two mixes I made in Cool Edit Pro's multi-track editor consisted of about 100 or so audio vocal wave files making up the song from start to finish. And I knew the names of each individual file in the multi-track timeline in Cool Edit Pro, and so this told me roughly where in the 60 minutes jam session they each came from. And because I had already edited the audio files as well as the video files, taking out what I didn't want, this caused many discrepancies between the video and audio timelines and thus matching them up accordingly had to be done manually, and not just by using the minutes and seconds within the 60 minutes jam session timeline. I messed up, okay. So in the end, I just played the videos one at a time in DaVinci Resolve, and then played the wave vocal parts one at a time in a separate media player, and did it all by ear. It was by far the worst bit to do. It was torture, honestly, absolute torture. I think it took about 20 solid hours to match up all of the 60 minutes or so of audio to video for these first two songs. But I did do it. Nuff said. Well baby, baby, I wanna watch up. May God guide you, may God bless you, and may God protect you. Love light learn live, but don't forget to live. P.S. I love you all. J.S.M. I love my baby. And my baby, she love me. Together we're gonna have some sex and be so damn happy.